It sounds like left brain, i.e. conceptual writers, have a lot of trouble letting go. They're just, they're so formulaic and there's so much about, you know, making sure that this makes sense and that, you know, whereas with these right brain people, they're just all over the place and they're just too easily led. So it sounds like you do exercises to help the left brain people let go and the right brain people yeah. so, or bring another themselves way. in. So there's a great video that I can send people. Again, you can email my assistant, which is lisa at coreymandel.net. And so it's a neurologist and she'll really break down the conceptual and the intuitive parts of the brain and literally what one part is good at, what the other part is good at, but they can't talk to each other they, because they have a different processor. It's like the old days with PCs and Apple. So like you have a dream, which is a very intuitive experience, non-linear, uh, non-causal, but it's really evocative. And then you try to tell someone about the dream, which is a conceptual exercise. And the best you can do is kind of like get them to go, oh, I see how you had a really interesting dream, but they don't necessarily <laughs> experience it that right, way. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, it's the, the hardest part is turning off your home base. And then when I can get you over to this other side, I will give you exercises because everyone knows about this 10,000 hours to become an expert at something. Well, even Malcolm Gladwell has said that 10,000 hours was the wrong thing to focus on. That, there's nothing magical about 10,000 hours. What he said was 10,000 hours of dedicated practice. And everyone latches on to 10,000 hours, but everyone forgets dedicated practice. Dedicated practice is the way people become an expert in something is, sure, they got to put a lot of time and energy and passion into it, but it's not, it's what they do with their training, it's how they train. And so if you think about, if you wanted to be, uh, I train at Second City Improv, they don't let you on stage for a year and a half because they are, you're doing specific exercises every day to learn certain key skill sets that ultimately they'll integrate together and then they'll put you on stage. Same thing with Juilliard and acting. Same thing if you're a professional athlete. Um, it's about specific exercises to train yourself to develop the key skill sets and integrate. And so I, and I'm sure we'll talk about this at some point. Now I was a, a, a working studio writer for 11 years. And while I did that, I taught once a year at UCLA um, to give back and for fun. And then over the last six years, I've been um, uh, building a teaching business and teaching and working with writers. And I have a lot of friends and I know a lot of people who are very successful writers and almost all of them either figured all this stuff out themselves, which takes about 10 to 12 years for most people or they had someone help them. And usually there's two kinds of people that help them, a manager, or they get to be a writer's assistant and staffed on a TV show. And they, that showrunner, following that showrunner's process, I know someone who worked on Breaking Bad and working with Vin Skilligan for three years taught her how to change her process. In fact, this is a great story. She was very intuitive and she got on to Breaking Bad. And Breaking Bad, what will happen is in the beginning of the season, uh, Vince Gilligan will ask every, all the writers in the room to come up with certain ideas and pitch ideas. And if he likes the idea, he writes it on an index card and it goes on the board. And ultimately, there's all these ideas on the board that they're going to start to work with to develop the, 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 the season. Well, if you're a new writer, you really want to get a lot of ideas on the board. Because if he's going around the room and none of your ideas get on the board, that doesn't look so good. Well, his rule was the idea had to fit on the card. So if you start pitching an idea and he's writing and he runs out of room, might be a great idea, but if he ran out of room on the card, it doesn't go on the board. And she's like, I couldn't get my ideas out concisely enough. She said, I didn't know how to speak an index card. And so she had to learn, and this is one of the things that I train intuitive writers to do, is how to take what they see and feel and how to communicate it in a very concise way. And so that's just one example. I, I'm sure she learned a million things from working with someone like Vince Gilligan. But that's just one example. She learned how to be very concise in how she thought and felt and, and pitched. So the way that most writers get here is they've worked in TV for several years with a really great showrunner and through that process you learn these skill sets and you adapt and you develop or you just get pushed out. Or there's a manager who will work intently with you because the reality is most writers if not all writers, they have certain strengths, certain weaknesses, and certain blind spots. Blind spots are weaknesses you don't know you have. The key is to A, figure out what your blind spots are, so now at least they're known weaknesses. Then how do you turn those weaknesses into strengths? 
And that's where that dedicated practice comes in. And it's very difficult to do this yourself. So a manager who really knows what they're doing, they will develop a writer over, you know, they'll, they'll take a writer who's really good, but not exceptional, and they will train that writer over one, two, or three years to do this. And then when that writer can write at that level, they'll go out with a script pretending that that was the first thing the writer ever wrote. By definition, when you sell something, that's the first script you ever wrote. You never talk about the rest of it. So the, the writers that I know who have career, especially the best careers, generally speaking, either they were trained by showrunners because they were able to work in TV early on, or they were trained by managers. Very few of them were self-trained. It's possible, I know of some examples, but it took a decade and, and they're rare that they got there. Well, the reality is there are a lot of writers who don't live in LA, so they can't work on a show. And even if you live in LA and you're like, okay, I'll work on a show for a training, where do I sign up? It's not that easy, it's very competitive. And the thing about managers is they're so busy servicing their clients, um, no one wants to do development anymore. So the manager has to really work with their their top writers and really help them develop their material, they don't have time to work with their new writers, their emerging writers. So there's all these writers who are like, I have a manager, but they won't spend a lot of time helping me. And there's all these managers saying, God, I really wish I could be helping these writers, but I don't have time. So it's really hard to find someone to do that kind of training. So that's when I, I used to teach at UCLA for a long time. I was, and someone challenged me this, like, can you develop a training program to train writers like this. If they don't have a manager who can do this for them, if they're not yet able to get on a, a TV show or they don't want to or they don't live in LA, is there another way they can learn these skill sets? Because a lot of the, 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 the programs out there, they're just telling people to take your writing and put it into this paradigm. But so what I did is I wanted to create a series of workshops that could teach these, these, these skills. So that's where this all came from.